So I'm starting with Omnisphere because it's one of my favorites and I think it's pretty easy to, to use. It might be a little intimidating at first to look at, but we're going to get over it real quick. So there's Omnisphere and there's no sound loaded. There's a blank sound in part one. So where Expand could play four instruments at once, Omnisphere can play eight. So it's an eight part multi timbral virtual instrument. Do we care? It plays eight different parts and that's all that matters. So I'm going to name my track. I'm going to name it Omnis and, and you may have more, ugh, I can't spell. Um, I'm going to call it Omnis one. So I'm going to, this is where I come in on Sunday morning and I have my cup of coffee and I'm ready to start writing something, but I don't know where to begin. So the first thing I need beyond my, even before my coffee is the discipline to get my ass in here. I could be out at brunch with my friends. I could be out playing tennis. I should be working out. Uh, but really that's the most important thing in all of this stuff is that you really have the discipline to make the time to, if you really want to learn this stuff and you really want to record, then you have to have the discipline to get your ass in front of it. So there's your lecture for the day. Find the discipline. So I'm in here and I'm ready to write and I'm like, okay, what do I do? So I start looking for sounds. Omnisphere is a great place to start. It is, it's not, you think techno and stuff when you hear synths, but you'll hear it's totally not like that. And also if you take the way you play as a keyboard player and apply it to some funky sound, you'll see how, how awesome it is. Okay. So where, where do we start? What, what the hell am I looking at in front of me? You'll, the main thing you'll see is you'll see parts one, two, three, four. They're all blank. So we don't have anything. We have, don't have anything in part one. So let's say I'm probably going to load maybe three sounds in Omnisphere. So how, what, do I, what do I do to play those sounds? All right, we've got our instrument. Now what do I do? I'm going to create three MIDI tracks. Command Shift N, new track. I'm going to hit the number three and I'm going to go right here and say MIDI tracks. All right. So here's my MIDI tracks. We don't have to name them yet because we don't know what kind of sound we're using. And we're going right here and we're saying, okay, MIDI one, I want you to play Omnisphere channel one. This is the output. So this is going output to my speaker right here. Um, this is going out to Omnisphere to channel one. I want to play channel one. Now, what am I going to put on channel two? I want this to play channel two so I can choose a sound for channel two. And then here, Omnisphere channel three. Now, here's the deal. On part one, this track right here is going to play it. On part two, this one over here. Let's, so let's load up something for part one. Okay, so how do we get sounds in parts one, two, and three? So the cool thing is, check this out. I'm going to click right here on multi. And I, this is where I have all my parts. This says, hey, whatever's here is going to play out on MIDI channel one. Whatever is here is going to play in MIDI channel two. Hey, let's pick a part for one. Let's click on default. And now we have what's called the patch browser. So these are the categories and these are all filters. You can filter down to pretty much just stick with the categories. The first category that's really great is this ARP and BPM. And what that is, that's playing all these sounds over here. So this is the category and then you can go through all these filters. I want something euphoric. I mean, so it's that moods are subjective. What I think is euphoric, somebody else might think is boring. Um, let's hope not. Um, but you click on euphoric and then it filters down more your sounds, but then you're at the mercy of whoever thinks this sound is euphoric. Let's see. Is this euphoric? Whoop, I'm not in record. I'm going to put MIDI channel one in record. Oh, McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he, okay, not, okay, fun. It's kind of, kind of, um, I don't know, Western techno, but those are what somebody says euphoric. So I say, you know what? Never mind the euphoric thing. Let's just put all moods not angry. Ooh, what's angry? Swaggering around. That's angry. Okay. I'm going to click on all 
And now we're listening to all the, the sounds under category ARP in BPM. ARP means arpeggio. Usually it's gonna play something. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna play this one. I'm just playing a C major. Oh, oh that's that sound we had earlier, the angry one. Um, there are these down arrows here. I wish I knew what the shortcut was to get to the next sound, but imperial march movement. Okay. The pursuit. Cool. So let's say I like that and I may want to use it instead of going, oh, or writing it down or making it, you can go over here and you can rate it. I can say, hey, that's a five star sound. And then I can, when I go in here, I can say, only show me my five star sounds. But that's a pain in the ass too. Why not commit? This is one thing you have to get in the habit of doing is making decisions quickly, recording them, and moving on. Because if you do this and you go through these sounds and this sound and this sound and this sound, it's three hours later and you haven't recorded shit. So the minute you hear something that goes, huh, I kind of like that, my first thought is, all right, I'm going to record it. All right? So I have the track and record. I've created a click track. I know my tempo. I'm going to listen real quick. And I'm just going to hold down two notes. Here we go. So I'm going to go and record. Okay. So now what do I do with it? I can either leave it alone and come back and fix it later, but I like to fix while I'm there. So now you'll see there's what we were just recorded. I like to view as notes and I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to zoom in and you can see, I'm going to move Omnisphere out of the way a little bit that I didn't exactly hit right on the beat because I'm imperfect. Um, and so I need to quantize, right? So I'm going to option zero and I'm going to quantize to quarter notes and I'm going to make sure I'm at a hundred percent. I think if this is just unchecked, it automatically is a hundred percent. Let me move this out of the way so you can see the notes move and I hit apply. Now watch, bam, I'm perfect. So I'm going to zoom out to get to the end and I'm going to trim these guys over here to end. I don't need quantize anymore. I'm going to go in grid mode. I'm going to grab my trimmer and I'm going to say, Hey, get over there. I'm clicking right at the end, clicking right at the end. So now I have a perfect loop of this part. I'm going to save command S and you'll notice here, here are my numbers. I've got two full bars of this and now I can repeat option R or I can duplicate command D. So let's duplicate uh, so I already have one, two, three, four. So there we go. There's that sound. And we know the sound is called, I'm going to close this browser out. Part one is the pursuit. So I'm going to go over here to my MIDI channel, MIDI, uh, I mean my MIDI track and name it pursuit. All right. So I'm, uh, pursuit uh, exclamation point. So we've got our track pursuit and now I would probably mute this because I don't want this to influence what I'm going to choose next. And I put the next MIDI track in record. You notice I can do that from the edit window here, or it's the, it's the exact same thing as if I put a track and record on the MIDI, on the edit window or the mix window. So we've got this funky part. We don't know if we're going to keep, but we've recorded it. It's there. Now we want to go to channel two. We have eight different parts. So we may as well just start gathering up inspiration, right? So here we go to part two and I'm going to go back to ARP and I, this is again where I could just go, let's find a BPM guitar and let's just see what that sounds like. So now it filters, we're choosing anything arpeggiated going to the beats per minute and it's filtered to be kind of a, a guitar part that, that adheres to the tempo, BPM, beats per minute. And now we're going to choose the sound. So I'm going to put, um, it's in the, this MIDI track is in record. Mm -hmm. Oh, MacDonald had a fun, okay. All right, interesting, but it's cool. So. So I could find a part, you hit the down arrow, go to the next sound. No.
Okay, so all I'm doing is doing this walk down. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to hit return. Here we go. All right, there's that part. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna move this guy out of the way. I'm going to make this track bigger. I'm going to view it in notes. And I'm going to quantize, option zero. And I am gonna put it, since it's a BPM part, I am gonna quantize it perfectly. Okay, so there's that part. Does it work with this other part? Let's hear. I'm going to unmute the pursuit track, and here we go. You know, um, the length, this is where I kind of would play with something. The, the length of this um, could work instead of the whole loop. Let me just try this. I'm taking just part of the loop and just looping the first bar, the first one bar. I'm in grid mode, I've trimmed it in grid mode, and now I'm gonna try this. Command D, Command D, Command D, it's just gonna go over everything. Here we go. So it's actually, I'm just playing here, there. It's, I think that's what I want, if that's gonna work, and Feel the love, everybody go away. Here's all new part. So you see what I did? I, ch I took that whole, it, instead of using the whole phrase, I took the trimmer and I brought it back and I was like, no. And then I brought it back some more. I did it all in grid mode and then I just duplicated that. So now this part works with this part. All right, so I'm gonna name this. This sound is called Extrusion Fusion. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna close the patch browser, and I look at my, I'm, this is probably the best way to look, is to stay in multi-mode. So part one is the pursuit, part two is Extrusion Fusion, and um, I'm just gonna call it Fusion. And you can also you know, name it what it is, loopy, plucky, whatever. And now I've got this third track to go into record. So I go here to part three. And so now what, what if we want a pad part? So I'm gonna go to pads and I'm going to uh, take, uh, I don't want sweeping, sparkling. Let's choose soft and warm. And now over here are my results. I choose the category pads and strings. I choose soft and warm. I can click on gorgeous analog dark pad, this MIDI track is in record. So I just have to figure out what to play to that other part. I don't want to do the same thing. It's going to be predictable, right? So I think, well, what can I do? I could do a walk up. Let's just see how that sounds. So this is where we get errors. And uh, errors happen. So the thing is, I'm using a... Um, video capture program right now at the same time I'm running Pro Tools and Pro Tools is probably yelling at me saying, hey, um, you're taxing the computer. But errors happen. And if you're the type that uh, is in, uh, into road rage, uh, then Pro Tools might not be for you because there's times that you want to take a sledgehammer to the computer. But you can't. You, you can either choose to be really frustrated and give up and not move forward, or you can think like a detective and think, i got to solve this problem. And then you Google, you call your friend, you reach out for help, you call tech support, and you get your problems resolved because otherwise you're not going to move forward. And so if you get to the point, I can't figure it out, bullshit. There is a way to figure it out. There are people to help. There are tech support companies. There, so, so when you get errors like this, don't get all crazy road ragey. Get in solution mode and then take the time, solve it, and then get back to creativity. Always when you get an error, save. So 
you kind of get the gist here. I've been yakking on. I'm going to stop for now and we're going to move on to more inspiration part two.